Theater of the Minds, my absolute favorite way of playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. You do not use a battle grid, you do not use maps, you do not use miniatures. All you need is your mind to imagine the world you are playing in. And you need a dungeon master that is comfortable with it, but it can offer your players and you as a dungeon master a lot of freedom that you don't have with grid and miniature play. It is a very agile way of playing and I have a few players who didn't want to try it out at first and after trying it out for one and or two sessions, they don't ever want to go back. So here is my guides, episode one of my guides to how to teeter of the mind. So yes, this is going to be a video series about how I run theater of the mind games because I only run theater of the mind games, games. I do not draw anything. I do not use miniatures. I do not use anything. And I was looking for a long time searching for a good way to explain to people how I run them, how to do it. And the only way I could come up with is to come with genuine examples on how I did it in the past. So today I just want to quickly talk about how I run, for example, a labyrinth. And every episode I want to talk about an encounter or talk about a fight or talk about a trap or whatever how I run it in my games and I hope to give you inspiration on uh, running theater of the mind sessions for yourself because if you play online over Zoom or Skype or Discord, Theater of the Mind is actually the best way of playing, to my opinion, because it flows very fast. There's fewer dead moments in the game. Uh, everybody gets their say and it just flows quicker and the game goes quicker and it just goes... Up to, uh, it, plays out more like a movie and I've run a labyrinth last week for my players and a labyrinth is a good example. A lot of dungeon masters take a lot of the, take a lot of time to like draw out a labyrinth and put, put uh, traps in there and monsters in there and whatever they want in there and that's all good and the players are we take a left turn and we take a right turn and one of the players is trying to draw a map and he's making mistakes and everything and although that's very fun and sometimes funny way of playing you can actually do the same thing without any pencils, without any paper, without any markers. And it's actually a very easy way to do it and how I run a labyrinth. I just, at a certain point, had my players uh, walk into a round room with stone walls everywhere and they just know, okay, this is going to be a round maze and we need to get to the center because there is the magic item we are looking for. So they uh, just started walking through the maze and this is the way I set it up. They are level 8 if I'm not mistaken right now and I wanted the maze to be difficult but doable. I didn't want them to die there or whatever, I just wanted it to be difficult and doable. So the way I set it up was, you, the players just needed to make um, navigation checks. Three of them navigation checks and the navigation checks are actually uh, you can do a survival check or an insight check whatever the players are comfortable with whatever they're good at um, you can make them roll a group insight check or a group survival check in order if they see if they can find their way through the maze and the way I set it up was they had to make three checks three checks in order to get through the maze if they get three checks correct checks good good rolls they would just walk through the maze and get to the center it's not that difficult of a maze not that big of a maze you can make five checks you can have ten checks you can have whatever you want then I had a list of uh, five or six traps that I just know uh, that I just wrote down some simple traps and a few even a few monsters and other hazards that are in that maze and all they need to do is make three good checks if they make a check and they make a bad check Different class 15, by the way, if they make a, a four, if they roll a 14 as a group, then uh, they get into one random trap or one random uh, fight with a monster. For example, the Minotaur could be there, or they could be like a purple worm going through the coming through the wall and trying to eat them uh, or there could be a trap like uh, there could be poisoned arrows coming out of the walls like very stereotypical stuff a rolling boulder trying to uh, squash them which is very stereotypical but uh, it's very cliche for Dungeons and Dragons but it's also I love cliches sometimes so um, every time they fail a check they get one of that those things thrown at them you just say you're in this hallway and walking in and I had this happen so one of my players who was like peeking around corners and checking out uh, and, and but she wasn't really looking for traps and then they rolled a bat check so the first player 
who was walking, who was playing a monk and she was scouting ahead, she got completely, completely obliterated by poisoned arrows. She got poisoned, but the paladin cured her, of course. She got the poison condition and she took like 17 damage from all darts coming out of the wall, stuff like that. And I give my players the chance to actually lower the difficulty uh, for these uh, for these rolls, for these checks. So they have to make three checks of difficulty class 15 in order to get through the miss. But if they come up with stuff like, um, for example, one person was like, "Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm scratching every corner we've already been to with like a scratch in the wall." Okay, I, I tell them, okay, that this might help you. They don't know for sure if it helps them, but they can come up with this stuff. I say this helps them, um, and then I can, I can literally. Say to myself or write down, uh, uh, say that they that the difficulty class goes down to 14. Then one of my players was smart enough to unravel a piece of their rope and leave that behind them, like so there is a rope on cross sections and they know where they've been and what way they've come. Another player was like, yeah, we passed this rope again for the second time, for example, and then I just cut on cut my finger and I put some blood on the rope in the direction we are going. Those little things can lower the difficulty class of their check as a group. So at a point they were so smart and they were doing all kinds of stuff that the difficulty class of their role actually became a 13 instead of a 15, which is way easier in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so they actually got these roles pretty quick, so you can make them as difficult as you want. You can start with a 20 and then add upon that for certain things and, and de decrease for certain things. But the the cool thing about this is this is this keeps the flow going. They just roll a check something happens. If they make a good check, you just tell them, you have a feeling you're going the right direction, you take a left turn and you don't, uh, you aren't really necessarily bumping into dead ends. Now and then you're bumping into dead ends, but you really quickly know uh, how to turn around and you know where you came from and you're you're, you're confident you're, you're actually making progress through this maze. Also, you're looking at the ceiling and you're actually you, you notice that you're going closer to the center of, of the of the uh, of the room, so of the maze. So you tell them that kind of stuff. If they fail a check, of course, a boulder comes rolling in, or or there's suddenly a, a minotaur that lives in that maze, or there's something else that is just in that maze that happens. Maybe somebody falls into a pit trap with pikes. You know that typical Dungeons and Dragons uh, dungeon crawling stuff. And the the the, the the upside this has for uh, for uh, a, a grid play against grid play is that I have a feeling that with these kinds of encounters, with these kinds of things, the 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 game is just often stopped. It is often it gets into a halt where um, your players are trying to figure out where they've been and they're, they're like, I know there was a left turn here and it was a right turn there and no, I forgot, I, I think I got it wrong and stuff like that and it just puts the game on a halt way too often while making checks i mean if you're watching a movie like say you're watching a movie and although the leading character could be drawing a map you as a person who follows the story is never like looking okay this, 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 this. you just know that from their map they know where to go and you can also say if a person if a player is they want to create a map you just tell them okay you create a map you just lower the difficulty class. You just lower the difficulty class by two points because they are drawing a map from where they're going. And you, they could make some small mistakes or some small errors, but still by making this map and keeping track of their progress, they are actually making progress easier. And that's the same thing. They're still making a map. And now here comes the important part. It is their character who's making the map, not the player. And that is really important to me. Uh, because that is an issue I always have with map making. Maps should be created by the character, not by the player. Although the player could be creating a map, it is the character that uh, creates the map. So by them having creating a map and you lowering the difficulty class of that for that reason, it is actually just easier to go through the maze. And that is just a small uh, episode one thing I wanted to talk about on how to run theater of the mind. Try this out once. Try it out for yourself in your games. If you're a grid player, just say, we're gonna ra run a theater of the mind encounter uh, anyway, and just 
do it like that make them have checks <clears throat> And don't map everything out and then just throw random encounters or prepared encounters at them if they fail. If you're like, this is a big ass maze and I want them to spend like 10 sessions in this big, gigantic, enormous maze, that is no problem. Just have them, they need to succeed on 20 checks. And every time, like difficulty class 18 or something like that, depends on their level, of course. Start with 18 and if they are smart about it and they try to figure out stuff, one person is making a map and the other person is making, is putting rope or breadcrumbs behind them or whatever, uh, and another person is scratching the wall for where they're going and, and person are, people are coming up with all kind of stuff. Uh, maybe one person is like casting different kind of stuff everywhere where they've been or stuff like that. People can be really, really... Uh, they can come up with all kinds of crazy stuff lower the difficulty class make them roll checks uh, Make like the leading person roll checks with advantage because another person might be helping them Then another person is like guarding the, the back and stuff like that um, uh, make them Think about how their characters should do it and not how they as a player at the table should do it. And that is really important for theater of the mind because that is why it plays out more as a movie and less as a war game. Uh, I was Mr. I am still Mr. Tarosk. I hope this is useful for you useful for you and I hope your inspiration may guide you.